This is Coach Lee, and I'm going to talk to you about your ex's thoughts during no contact. A lot of people have asked that I revisit this subject because I do have another video about this, and it's called Stages Your Ex Goes Through During No Contact, and I'll link to that video in the description below. If you don't know what the no contact rule is, I have videos on that, and I'll link to those in the description below as well. But basically, after a breakup, it gives you the best chance to get your ex back if that's what you want. If you will stay away, if you will give them the breakup and not contact them, not initiate contact with your ex. And what happens when you do that is pretty interesting. It doesn't always happen that you get your ex back. It's not 100% and I'm not able to guarantee anything. But I can tell you after 20 years that it works a lot. And it's the best thing you can do even if your ex doesn't come back because it shows respect for yourself that you will not beg and plead and try to be with someone who says they don't want to be with you. Now, their mind can often change, and that's what the no contact rule can actually help happen. It helps them to actually experience reality because they don't necessarily know that they want the breakup. They just think they do until they really experience it. And I have lots of videos on how the no contact rule gives them a real breakup instead of enabling them to stay broken up with you by you showing them that you'll always be there and they can always get you back and you're still interested. So I won't get into that anymore, but it's normal. It's natural for you to wonder what's going on with your ex. What are they thinking? And that's what I'm going to talk about that. What is your ex thinking during no contact? I'm going to compare the stages that your ex will likely go through, at least to some degree, to your actions. The first stage that an ex usually goes through after a breakup, after they have broken up with you, is relief. And that's where they think they've made the right decision. They're glad that they've gotten the breakup over with because unless they were a monster who you shouldn't try to get back together with anyway, they didn't want to hurt you. That wasn't their goal. They didn't get into the relationship to hurt you and they don't get pleasure by hurting you. So they didn't want to hurt you and they're glad that they got that over with. And for the moment, they're not necessarily going to think that you're still hurting. They're just not going to think about it that much, usually. After the first 48 hours anyway, there can definitely be some drama and some going back and forth in the first 48 hours when there can be some shock to it, especially if they haven't thought about it as long as a lot of other exes. Sometimes people consider the breakup for months and they go back and forth and finally make that decision. If it's just a few weeks, that's still a decent amount of time. And that's why when you argue with them, you can't just talk them out of it easily, usually. But a few weeks is different than a few months. And so sometimes that first 48 hours, there can be some drama and some back and forth and them even reaching out to you and showing some confusion and some doubt about the breakup. But usually after the first 48 hours, they are entrenched in that relief stage where it feels good and they think they have a future without you and that it's going to be good, that it was the right decision for them. And during this stage, they think that the future will be better. And so what we're looking at here is what your ex is thinking about the future and the past. So in the relief stage, your ex is thinking that the future will be better because they won't be with you romantically. In terms of the past, they probably look back at the relationship, though very little in the relief stage, because usually it's sort of like a honeymoon phase and they're thinking that they're doing all the fun things they couldn't do before and they're glad they got it over with. And so they're not using a lot of analytical thought to consider this. But in the little that they do, and they look back at it, at the relationship, they will have something similar to how they look at the future. And that is they will look at the relationship with some relief that it's over with. And that's largely because they are in the relief stage. And so they're relieved that they are out of the relationship. But that can soon change. And again, this is if you are using the no contact rule. But after the relief stage, your ex will go into a curiosity stage. And again, I talk about these stages in another video that I'll link to in the description below. But your ex goes into curiosity. And so that's where a lot of this depends on you because if you are staying strong in no contact, and I see in the comments on YouTube and on Instagram that a lot of times people will break no contact. They just can't stand it and they think they need to contact their ex because they feel like they're losing them, even though actually quite the opposite is true. After they break up with you, the more you can stay away, the more you will pull them towards you and reattract them. A lot of you will break no contact or reach out because you just kind of fall off the wagon. And when you do that in the curiosity stage, you tend to cause their thoughts on the future and the past to go a certain direction. And so when they think about the future, if you are contacting them, they tend to think about the future as though it will be better without you. Because in many ways, you are preventing them 
from the breakup. You're keeping them from what they think they want. And so in a lot of ways, they're trying to escape you. And when they think about the past, they think of it as relief that the relationship is over with, but there's this frustration that though it's over with as far as they broke up with you, and that there are some visible signs that they're not spending as much time with you. If you're still contacting them, they are still looking back, thinking that they have some relief, but they want more. And so they are unfulfilled. And the two of you are on opposite sides of the table with different goals. And so they feel like they are in a battle with you. If on the other hand, you are strong in the no contact rule, you're not reaching out to them. You are giving them the breakup, giving them the gift of your silence. Then when they look to the future, since they are in the curiosity stage, they are curious about what's going on with you. And they look to the future in part with some belief that it will be better, but they also have moments where they wonder if it will be worse without you. And so they're curious in multiple ways. They're curious if the breakup was the right decision, but they're also very curious what's going on in your mind and in your heart. Why are you not acting like someone who has been dumped? You're acting more like the person who did the dumping because you're not chasing, begging, pleading. You're not trying to save the relationship. At least that's what it looks like. You have just gracefully bowed out and they have no information about you. It's a beautiful mystery and they are oftentimes very interested in unwinding it, figuring it out and getting a glimpse into what's going on with your thoughts. And this is true even if they don't think they want to get back together with you. Because it's an odd dynamic and that when they break up with you, their ego goes up and your attraction level and their eyes goes down. They cement themselves above you on this totem pole of attraction. And that's really just the nature of the beast for a breakup. Because since they are saying that they don't see a future with you, it's basically them dismissing you to a lower level of attraction as not worthy of them. Even though they didn't think that thought, that's what really it ends up becoming in the way that they determine attraction, feel attraction, and view attraction with the two of you in mind. So you can see that no contact certainly has a better impact on your ex because there's nothing to escape. And so they have this response of turning back towards you a little bit. You're not chasing. Well, where are you? It's sort of like when you probably used to play this game as kids where you would be arguing and one of you would be saying yes and the other would be saying no. And then you switch up your answer and the other person just responds with the exact opposite answer. So you were saying yes, they were saying no. And then all of a sudden you say no and they respond with yes. It's because in their mind, they just know they're opposed to you. They are fighting against you. They're arguing with you and they have a different answer. And so they're going to say a different answer, even if all of a sudden you have come around to their way of thinking. And so when you're not even opposing your ex, when there isn't that back and forth of you want one thing and they want the other, there's no need to fight. And so they go from being curious to now the next stage is concern. And again, if you're staying strong and no contact, when they look to the future and they're concerned, now they're concerned that maybe they made the wrong decision and that you could be strong enough to move on. And you're showing them you're strong enough to stay away and be in no contact. You're strong enough not to contact them. And so that's giving them a lot of evidence that their future really could be without you. And they are concerned because as they look back on the relationship, because you're not fighting them and they don't feel the need to escape, they're able to view those romantic, happy memories as romantic and happy and not something they're trying to escape. They're able to see them with a more balanced and unbiased mind to actually see them as they were those beautiful times. So they don't see the past as something they're relieved is over with. They see the past as something that they are missing and that they're seeing as beautiful and not something they want to escape. And all this is because you're staying in no contact as they go through these stages. Get information on my emergency breakup kit. I'll link to it in the description below and you can get more information about it at myexbackcoach.com. That's myexbackcoach.com and it's the emergency breakup kit and it can guide you to get back together with your ex and to reattract them. The next stage your ex goes through usually is fear. It's past concern and they are now afraid they have made the wrong decision and that they have lost you. And that's two things. And both of those happen from you using no contact. And so if they think they've made the wrong decision, then all of a sudden they're on the same side of the table as you. They agree with you that the breakup should not be over with. At least that's what 
you initially thought because when they broke up with you, you didn't want the breakup. But now that you have showed them that you could stay away and they have gotten no answers from you and they've gone through these stages, they wonder if the two of you are still on the same side of the table or not. Could they get you back? And so when they think to the future, they wonder if you'll be there and they're afraid you won't be. And now that they're concerned that they made the wrong decision, they blame themselves and there's frustration and they look to the past and they miss the past. They miss those beautiful moments with you. And they wonder if they have blown it with you. And this is usually when, if it's going to happen, when your ex will reach out. They'll reach out with something casually, usually to start with, just to see how you're doing, just to see if you'll talk to them. But these are the things that your ex thinks about during no contact. And if you're using the no contact rule, then oftentimes this is how it goes. It's not guaranteed. But if you're using the no contact rule, you give yourself the best chance of your ex going through these stages and these thoughts. I have a new channel on YouTube that just started a few days before filming this video. It's about overcoming anxiety. The channel is actually called Anxiety Peace. You'll be able to subscribe to it at the end of this video.